I was strolling through a cactus garden when I saw this large grasshopper stop on a cactus in San Bernardino, California. Schistocerca nitens is a species of grasshopper known by several common names, including the vagrant grasshopper and the gray bird grasshopper. It's a close relative of the desert locust. This grasshopper is native to the southwestern United States from California to Texas and also occurs in Mexico. Here we see it living in the desert but it also lives in woodlands and lower elevation mountainous areas. Here we see it acting like a dead leaf, the same way a walking stick does. It's a large grasshopper reaching lengths of up to 10 centimeters. Unlike the orange-legged grasshoppers I documented in an earlier video, the vagrant grasshopper seems to have no fear of humans. As you can see, it has cryptic coloration that provides camouflage, its primary defense. See, I just petted it there and had no response. That's barely a response. It seems blithely unaware of its own danger if I were to choose to attack it. The vagrant grasshopper is a strong flyer, but it prefers not to leave more than 6 meters above the ground. It looks clumsy in midair. You can find any stage of its life cycle at any time of the year, but they are less active during the winter and fall. As you can tell from here, it has vision and awareness, but chooses to evade me not by flying away or jumping away but rather by ducking to the other side of the cactus like a child being chased around a tree trunk. The vagrant grasshopper is a troublesome invasive species in Hawaii. This grasshopper is usually solitary, but it has been known to swarm as locusts do on the Hawaiian island of Nihoa in 2004, wiping out some 90% of the vegetation on the island. It was probably introduced to Hawaii several decades ago and then spread through the archipelago by flying. It has the ability to fly at least 300 miles across an ocean. Whenever I see a grasshopper this big, I always think of the word locust. In fact, many grasshopper species can become locusts if they occur in high enough concentrations. The exact mechanism by which they transform into locusts is unclear, but it is said that when their antennae come into contact with each other frequently, they undergo a hormonal transformation to become locusts.